Welcome back, Hive Mind. This is Shalazar with Hive Mind Gaming, coming at you with another Raid Shadow Legends video. Today, we're going to take a look at our next update. So, update 2.30, which will be coming out, my guess, next week, because they're getting ready for the Halloween Fusion. All right, so first in our list of things that are coming out in this new patch is four new champions. First is going to be the Halloween Fusion, which is El Gaius. I assume that I'm saying that correctly. He's going to be a legendary magic affinity support for the undead hordes because, you know, we don't have enough undead hordes to saturate the market. All right, so let's get into his kit here. He's got an attack. One enemy has a 25% chance of placing a block cooldown skills buff for one turn. The chance increases by 0.75% for every 1% of HP this champion loses. Okay. Interesting. All right. Attacks, his A2 is attacks one enemy, puts the target skill on cooldown. If the enemy team has a, any duplicates of the target champion, will also put all their skills on cooldown. Alright, that's, that's a funny ability. I'm not sure how... I mean, I guess in Faction Wars that would be great, because they're all, you're always running into into duplicates and faction wars but why not just make that a attacks all enemies and just be done with it i don't know that's <sighs> okay all right his a3 ghost rage attacks all enemies has a 75 percent chance of removing two random buffs has a 75 percent chance of decreasing all enemies turn meters by 20 percent decreases enemy turn meters by a further 0.2% for every 1% of HP this champion loses. Okay, so I wonder if I, he's got to have a really good eight, uh, base HP to make this viable, I think. Um, let's see, and his A4 is a passive, which is spurned by death, prevents this champion's death and keeps them alive on one HP when hit by a fatal hit. Okay, and that's cool. If this skill prevents this champion's death, heals them by 10% of their maxim, max HP, fills their turn meter by 20%, and places a shield buff on them equal to 30% of their max HP for two turns, will not prevent this champion's death if they are under a block heal debuff. Interesting. Okay, so the block heal is a way to counter that ability. And it's on a six turn cooldown. And I bet that book's down probably one, I would say. It, I like it. I, I think that's a cool ability. With a something like this Swift Parry set, which, I mean, just for days protection stop him from dying for days i don't know that might that might be kind of fun to play around with all right next we have little miss annie oh look another undead hordes i mean it is a halloween event so i mean how, you can't i guess you can't ask for much let's see legendary void um and actually there's only one void in the undead hordes so yeah, Undead Hordes can definitely use a Void Legendary. Uh, let's see. It's attack-based, Little Miss Annie. Uh, her A1 is attacks one enemy three times. Each hit has a 50% chance of placing a 100% heal reduction debuff for two turns. Okay. And then her A2 is attacks one enemy two times. Places a 50% increased attack buff on this champion for two turns before attacking if the target is under a shield buff. Will ignore 25% of the target's defense if the target is under a shield buff. Places a perfect veil buff on this champion for two turns if this attack kills an enemy. 
fills this champion's turn meter by 30% if this attack does not kill a target. Alright, so if it kills a target, she gets Perfect Veil. If it doesn't kill a target, she gets 30% increased turn meter. That's a pretty cool ability. Alright, and then, let's see. Playdate. <laughs> oh my god, that's great. Uh, let's see. Attacks one enemy. Will ignore 25% of the target's defense if the target has higher defense than this champion. Decreases the target's max HP by 25% of the damage inflicted if the target has higher max HP than this champion. And then will repeat attack a second time if the target has both higher defense and higher max HP than this champion. Wow. So I, so that's a good ability against bosses. It's on a six turn cooldown, probably books down to a four turn. Yeah, that's kind of neat. That, that would be a good one against bosses uh, and some champs in, in arena, probably. And, prob and faction wars is probably going to be a big one, too. So, yeah, that's a pretty cool. I like... The, you notice on a lot of the newer champs, they've their abilities are are multi-layered, meaning it's not just a attack and ignore something, or attack and something happens. It's it, it's and straightforward. Now, almost every single champ that has come out lately, especially legendaries and epics, their their abilities are multifaceted. It makes for a more interesting game. So anyway, all right. So her A4 and A5 are both passives. She's got two passives. Uh, her first passive is when revived, attacks the enemy that killed this champion with the default skill. Oh, nice. All right. Also fills this champion's turn meter by 25% and places a shield buff on this champion equal to 50% of their max HP for two turns. That's a really good passive. I like that a lot. All right. Her second passive, each hit has a 50% chance of decreasing the target's turn meter by 5% and a 50% chance of decreasing the target's max HP by 5% of that of the damage inflicted when attacking enemies under heal reduction debuffs and she's got the heal reduction in her A1 also heals this champion by 5% of the damage inflicted when attacking enemies under heal reduction debuffs okay that's interesting I like it and will not heal from damage inflicted by masteries okay that makes sense and then, of course, she's got an aura, which increases ally attack in all battles by 33%. Yeah, that's a solid champ. And I guess she's supposed to be a living doll. Pretty nails, hollow doll, play date, toys don't die, nice. Magical heart and aura, yeah. I See, and this is, I think, where they failed with the... With with Fane, I think she should be, like, small. Like, the size of a doll. And that would be very, very creepy. But we'll see. Alright. Uh, Narma the Returned. She is a magic affinity legendary support for Knight's Revenant. Which, that's great, because Knight's Revenant doesn't actually have a magic affinity uh, legendary, so uh, that's not a bad addition to the Knight's Revenant. Uh, let's see, Hell Crescent, her A1, is attacks one enemy, has a 40% chance of increasing the duration of three random debuffs on the target by one turn. Ooh. And then her A2, wor uh, Wording Dance. Weirding Dance. Attacks one enemy has a 75% chance of placing a 50% decrease attack debuff for two turn, or for three turns. 
Wow, three turns. That's that's nice. Uh, also heals all allies by 15% of this champion's max HP. The heal increases by 2% for each poison debuff on the target. Alright, so clan boss champion, obviously. It's on a five turn cooldown. I wonder if that's going to... If that could book down... It's probably only going to book down to four turns. But if it could book down to three turns where you can keep the, the decreased attack up the whole time, that would be that would be amazing. Uh, let's see. Toxic Toxin Trance attacks one enemy, has a 75% chance of placing three 5% poison debuffs, and a 25% poison sensitivity debuff for two for three turns. Fantastic. Someone else that has freaking poison sensitivity. This is great. Oh man. She is I like her. It's on a six turn cooldown, probably gonna book down to four turns. She's going to be amazing. She's gonna be amazing. This is fantastic. And then she's got an aura, increases ally accuracy in dungeons by 80. Wow. Um, yeah, she's my favorite so far. I mean, I really like the, the doll, but I really like uh, Little Miss Annie. But I think Narma is going to be my favorite out of those so far. All right, let's move to our fourth one. <laughs> Jason Voorhees himself, the masked fearmonger, who's going to be an epic spirit affinity attack champion for the Banner Lords. I love it. Love it that it's a Banner Lords. I mean, Banner Lords has a bunch, but at least it's not Undead Hordes. All right, so Nightmare, his A1, attacks one enemy two times. Each hit decreases the target's turn meter by 7.5% of the target if the target is under a fear or a true fear debuff. Reduces the cooldown of this champion's Taste of Despair, which is his passive skill, by one turn if the attack kills an enemy. Okay, eh. This is A1, probably not going to kill a lot of stuff, I'd say. Depends what the multipliers are, I'd say. Uh, let's see. His A2, Haunted Machete. <laughs> nice. Attacks uh, one enemy, has a 75% chance of placing a fear debuff for one turn, and a 75% chance of placing a 30% decreased speed debuff for two turns. Nice. Has a 75% chance of placing a true fear debuff on two enemies for one turn if this attack kills an enemy. One true fear debuff will be placed on the enemy with the lowest turn meter, while one will be placed on the enemy with the highest turn meter. That is fantastic. That's on a three turn cooldown, too. Wow. That's pretty nice. I doubt it's going to book down anymore, but on a three turn cooldown, that's pretty nice. So the books are probably going to be just to probably have a that's probably going to book up to a hundred percent chance to do that i'd say and add damage is probably all the books are going to be for the a2 the a3 well used axe <laughs> nice that's so fantastic all right basic uh well let's just go to the ascended ascended attacks one enemy will ignore 35 percent of the target's defense if the target is under a fear or a true fear debuff Places a 30% increased speed buff for two turns, a revive on death buff for two turns, and a block debuffs buff for one turn on this champion if the attack kills an enemy. So all of his all of his skills get better if he kills someone, which makes sense. Uh, fills this champion's turn meter by 50% whenever an enemy's HP drops below. 20% and that's on a six turn cooldown that's uh, whenever enemies drop uh, health HP drops below 20% wow that's pretty good that's really good I wonder if that books down any 
So I think they did a really good job uh, on their Friday the 13th uh, champ here. I, I think the only thing that would have made would have made it more canon is uh, or meta is if if it had some kind of passive that did more damage to scantily clad uh, barbarians or <laughs> or champions. So if you're if you're showing more skin than you are clothing, then he does extra damage. I mean that's the only only thing that would have made it even better as as a Friday the Thirteenth Jason Voorhees. But yeah, that is that is fantastic. I I really I really dig it. That that his kit is really good. All right, all right. So next we've got Lydia the Death Siren. Faction Wars reward. So they did make it to where she's only going to be available as your Faction Wars reward. And there's there's two things about that. There's or there's two arguments about that. One is, oh, that sucks because there's no way to get it unless you uh, do Faction Wars. So you can't actually pull her from a shard. The problem is if you do allow her allow to be pulled from a shard, could you imagine running up against someone that has multiples of this chick? I mean, you're literally only going to ever have one Lydia per account for now. My guess is because it's Polarium, they'll have some special <laughs> special going on where you could probably purchase her because, you know, that's how Polarium works. Anything that they can make a dime on. But, I mean, as much as it breaks my heart that it's going to be a while before I can get her, uh, I totally support the fact that you can only get her through Faction Wars. So, alright, so let's take a look at her kit, what it is now that they nerfed her already. She is a Legendary Void champion, support of the Dark Elves variety. Her A1, Oppression. Attacks one enemy, has a 75% chance of placing a fear debuff for one turn, has a 75% chance of increasing the duration of any poison sensitivity debuffs by one turn. Her A1 has a, has a passive effect, attacks enemy champions with this skill whenever they place a freeze, stun, fear, or true fear debuff on an ally. Jesus. The number of attacks increases according to how many debuffs are placed at the at that time. One attack for each free stun fear true fear debuff placed. The first attack will target the attacker, while all extra hits will attack random enemies. Can only attack each enemy once. Wow. Wow, so I guess what that means is if someone does an AoE stun or fear or true fear, then she will attack their whole team. If her whole team gets feared, then their whole team will get attacked by her once. That is crazy. Her A2, Siren's Well, attacks all enemies... Has a 75% chance of placing a 60% decreased defense debuff and a 25% weakened debuff for two turns. Also places a 25% strengthen buff and a 30% increased speed buff on all allies for two turns. That's on a four turn cooldown, probably books down, but that's just insane. Her A3 is Nullification, attacks one enemy two times. The first hit has a 75% chance of placing a 25% Poison Sensitivity for two turns. The second hit has a 75% chance of placing a Block Buffs and Block Cooldown Skills debuff for two turns. So her last ability is Death Hold, which is a passive. It denies enemy revive attempts. That's insane. Guys, that is effing insane. This works even if this champion is dead. <laughs> That's stupid.
stupid. If she's on their team, you cannot revive any of your champs. You just can't. That is stupid. Oh my god, that is just dumb. This, If this champion is alive when an enemy revive is denied, revives all dead allies with 50% HP and 50% turn meter. Stupid. Grants an extra turn instead if there are no dead allies. Wow. If this champion is dead when an enemy revive is denied, revives this champion with 50% HP and 50% turn meter, this skill will ignore block revive. Wow. It ignores block revive. So you can't even block revive someone. Whew, wow. At least it's on a nine turn cooldown. Holy mackerel. So I guess, yeah, I guess that, I mean, okay. So it's probably going to work once, in all fairness. But still, that is, that's crazy. Crazy insane. The fact that it's on a nine turn cooldown doesn't make it completely broken. Man, she's strong, guys. She is absolutely strong, if not broken. I mean, she is definitely, she's definitely going to be the strongest champion in the game. So her mu multipliers came out about a week ago. She she's not going to hit hard, but her kit, her she is definitely a support support champ because her kit is gross. All right. Next thing that's going to be out with this patch is the FAQ, the FAQ. Uh, so they're implementing this into the game. They're putting it in the off on the left-hand side tab where you open up to read the news and things like that. You can now click on it to uh, basically learn certain lingo, jargons, things like that. You can go directly. To, you can ask, you know see the frequently most asked questions things like that, and uh, get the information that you're looking for. So, All right, uh, the Bazaar is going to get three new avatars that you can purchase. They're probably going to be way too expensive for the normal players to purchase. Probably the only people purchasing that are going to be the whales or those that collect avatars. So, yeah, probably not going to matter because I think... Uh, probably going to be so outrageously priced that I think I'd rather buy a legendary tome because it's only going to be gold tier so I think a legendary tome is going to be more important than a than a avatar but I mean to each their own all right some of the miscellaneous stuff that's going to be added for classic arena there will now be a chest they're just going to make it I assume it's going to be just like the the 3v3 arena, which is where you go into the tier list and it shows where you are in your tier and then you just click on the box and it gives you a reward, just like the 3v3 arena works. Um, and then they're fixing 3v3 arena because, you know, they can't get it right. I mean, they've only fixed that progression bar like 10 times now. It's almost like every patch they've had to fix that progression bar in 3v3 of Arena since it's been out. But hopefully they'll get it right this time. They also made comments that there will be some quality of life improvements as well. Uh, getting prepared for Doom Tower. So my guess is Doom Tower will come shortly after this Halloween fusion. So once this Halloween fusion is uh, over and done with, uh, my my guess is they'll bring out Doom Tower, let everybody get their their feet wet with Doom Tower, and then they'll that'll move us right into uh, the Christmas fusion. Which, if you didn't see my previous video, they did a promotion where they were asking for uh, information in some survey. 
Well, when they did that promotion, they had a they had a piece of art that had a bunch of champs on it, and one of them was a knightly looking feller with uh, two horns coming off his helmet, and it looked frosted over, like ice and stuff on it. My guess that might be our first look at our Christmas fusion. So, so go check out my previous video on my channel and uh, take a look. That is it for this video. If you like what you've seen and you want to see more, just hit the like button and join the hive by hitting the subscribe button. All of them count and all of them are very appreciated. And we will see you next time. Bye.